Chris, it's June 25th. Let's talk about Mount Gox. Where do we start? Mount Gox. Sure. Can you give us some background and some history? Yeah, absolutely. Um, back back in the good old days, 2010, 2011, uh, basically onwards, Mount Gox was one of the largest uh, crypto exchanges that we had in the, in, this, in the industry. I believe back in 2013, they did around 70% of all the crypto transactions. So a really big player in the industry. Uh, after several attacks that I already had on their exchange, they got a massive hack back in 2014 and over 740,000 Bitcoins were stolen at that time. And so back then that had a value of, what was it, $65 million maybe. Um, and now lately, uh, as of yesterday, they finally announced that they're going to make repayments. 140,000 uh, Bitcoin are going to become back into the ecosystem, are going to be repaid to some of the claim holders, obviously a significant gain. And that's also why we've seen a quite a massive drop off in the Bitcoin price as a reaction to that news coming out that starting July, uh, those those funds will be coming on the market again. Yeah, I remember looking and this was years ago when FTX happened, not to bring up a sore subject for people, but when FTX happened and then looking, somebody had compared it to Mt. Gox and was like, look, when Mt. Gox happened, it was, and I forget the numbers, but I remember it was it was 10x more, at least, shock to the system, just because of how much was concentrated in the Mt. Gox as a trusted, using trusted exchange, right? Everything's trusted um, looking forward, but maybe not looking backwards as FTX. We have Mt. Gox, we have other exchanges that have fallen. So when people were like, oh, FTX was going to kill crypto or was going to kill Bitcoin. I was like, no, if Mt. Gox can't do it, then obviously we need to look and, and, and find perspective. You're saying that 140,000 are going to basically come online and be able to be traded. Today's June 25th in the next week. What type of sell pressure do we think that that's going to create? We see Bitcoin at around 60,000, 61,000 this morning. Where do we think that that could potentially go if 140,000 Bitcoin do come online and those people are going to be in crazy profit if the last time they saw their sats was in 2011? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think that's, that's what everyone has been wondering about. What is going to happen when Mt. Gox finally is going to you know, put those Bitcoin back to the original owners? Um, there's, there's a bit of a debate between you know, the people who are saying these guys have been the diamond handers of Bitcoin. You know, they, they came in so early, they will never sell. Um, this can, can be backed, obviously, by some of the claim, claims companies that have tried to buy them out in the past, uh, where those parties would say, I would rather have my Bitcoin back than get USD. But I think the situation right now is very different. You know, back then, those 740,000 Bitcoins were worth 65 million. The 140,000 uh, Bitcoin that we're seeing on the market right now is worth around eight and a half billion dollars at the current market value. That's a massive change. That means that, you know, people who maybe spent a couple thousand dollars on Bitcoin when they were strong believers are multimillionaires now. Their entire, you know, way of living can change significantly. So although we've obviously seen quite a drop off now that this news has come out, Bitcoin even dipped under 60,000 for a short while. It would not surprise me if we'll see more sell pressure from those people who just want to get out of it. They've not had access to their funds for so long. The first thing I would do is definitely make sure to cash out something so I could, you know, change my way of living or maybe make the, the mortgage payments or, you know, those are things that that go on in our day to day lives. And that's that's something I I expect. Yeah, it's actually quite crazy. And to go from 65 million to eight and a half billion and you really didn't do anything. It's not even hodling. It's not even diamond hands. You didn't have access to your sats. I think changes the dynamic. And as you're saying, even if you take 10% of your hodl or your Bitcoin that you're getting back and you put that into something, we're not even talking uh, paying down the mortgage. We're talking maybe buying a second house at that point, just due to the fiat exchange to that Bitcoin. What do we think is going to happen then over July? Because when I was looking at July and August, I was thinking this would be the time where we'd start to see some price appreciation. Historically, the summer, basically right after the halving is where you do start to see things tick up. And in my mind's eye, it was always in and around September where we'd probably crack 80 to 85 and move forward. But maybe with this potential setback and sell pressure, we may have some lower prices, which are maybe great for the hodlers and great for the investors because, you know, sats will be cheaper, but it could be a more difficult summer for miners between curtailment 
and other things being equal, if the price continues to come down, there's going to be that pressure on the hash price. What are you thinking now throughout the summer, knowing that, you know, starting in July, we, we could have some serious sell pressure? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, to, to put it more in perspective for, for those who don't see the significance of, you know, 140,000 Bitcoin coming back into the network, um, basically the entire ETF inflow so far has been around $14.5 billion. So more than half of that is now basically coming back onto the system and can be sold, right? And we don't know what these people are going to do. So um, I personally, like I said, I feel like some of these people will definitely sell at least portion of their Bitcoin. I do think there's, there's definitely strong buy pressure. I mean, MicroStrategy recently bought for another, you know, few hundred million dollars. Um, so there's, there's definitely that, that influx still coming in. So I don't think we'll see a massive drop. But I definitely do feel that we will see a, a pretty you know, difficult period for, for miners. On the other hand, we could also say during all the curtailment, miners having to turn off, this might actually, in terms of you know, profitability, might be the best time to do it because your, your uptime will already be low. So maybe if you're mining in a, at a loss or are close to break even, this might be your savior before we go into the, the new bull run, or at least... That's what we all hope for and expect. Love that. Absolutely great analysis. What would you do? And I know that I'm putting you on the spot here. What would you do if you lost 100 Bitcoin and all of a sudden you're going to get that back into a wallet that you thought you would never touch again? Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good question. Um, my initial response would likely be to, to probably cash out a lot. And that's mostly from a perspective of it's happened to me once. I'm not going to let this happen to me again. So... I'd probably cash out majority and then sit back and decide, hey, what do I want to do with this money, right? So I wouldn't fully cash out because I still think, you know, after all this time, you've seen crypto grow. You couldn't do anything with your Bitcoin, but you're seeing that it's becoming more and more adopted, you know, way more than you could ever imagine in 2014. So I do feel like a lot of these people will have the, that idea of Bitcoin is only going to go further, but I would definitely cash out a quite significant portion just to be able to say, hey, I've got it in the bank right now. Now I can take some time and decide what I'm actually going to do with my money. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, I think everyone will be taking it from, you know, probably taking that from the wallet, the wallet they receive it, putting it in a multi-sig, putting some of it in cold storage. And as you said, since 2011, when they maybe have last seen this, or, you know, more than a decade ago, there's so many more options for them to now be able to deploy that Bitcoin into cool things. Whether it's traveling on Bitcoin, which many people do, they travel the world on Bitcoin, whether it's buying some real estate with Bitcoin, maybe you find a buyer that's interested in getting some Bitcoin, or you turn it into miners. We at Compass, we accept Bitcoin, and that could be a place where you then take it and all of a sudden you get, I don't know how many ASICs, you get those up and running and you start to look towards a different way of using that Bitcoin leveraged uh, to do some more for yourself financially, if we're talking strictly financially, no? So, Chris, thanks for taking the time today and I will see you at the next check-in. Sounds good, Jared. Thanks for having me.